This video is going to cover how to change the settings on the new ATLAP Pro. Let's start off with how to align the laser. If you look around the laser, you'll see that there are four set screws. And you're just going to use the included Allen key to adjust these for windage and elevation. So let's say that the laser is high in your aim point. You would just use the Allen key to slightly loosen the bottom set screw and then tighten the top set screw. And you're going to continue that process each time rechecking to see where the laser is hitting in regards to your sight picture. A quick note is that if you have a red laser, you can do this against any uh, light colored wall so you can see where the laser is striking. But if you have the infrared laser, you're either going to need one of our targets or the smokeless range to allow you to see where the laser is hitting so that you can adjust it. And then if it's off left or right, then you're going to do the same thing. Let's say it's off to the left, then I would loosen the right set screw, tighten the left set screw, again recheck my alignment and continue that process until the alignment is correct. A quick note about that is that you don't want to over tighten these set screws because they're just small little set screws. So you just need to snug them up. You don't need to crank them down whenever you're tightening them. Another quick note is that in this new Pro model, the laser is connected to the board with a wire. It doesn't have the little blue batteries in it anymore like the previous models do. So it gets its power from the main CR123 battery that's in here. So there's no need to remove the laser from the front so that you don't damage the wires inside. Changing any of the settings first starts with getting into the setup menu. To do that, you simply depress the trigger for 10 seconds and wait till you hear the tone. Okay, there's my tone, let go of the trigger, I'm now in the setup menu. If I don't do anything, then it's gonna exit the, the setup menu by hearing some tones again. There you go, so now it's out of the setup menu. Setting one is turning on or off the accidental discharge sensor. So we're starting with ours turned on. So if I leave my finger in there, it's going to set off the alarm without pulling the trigger. So to turn it off, I'm gonna push and hold for 10 seconds. Once I hear the tone, I release the trigger and then pull it once and then let it go. Okay, now sensor is off. I can stick my finger in the trigger well and nothing happens. Now turning it back on is a little bit of a different procedure. Same way to turn it on, but there's one more step. So we're gonna push and hold the trigger for 10 seconds. Again, this is going from turning it off to turning it on. Release the trigger, pull the trigger once, set the gun down and don't touch it for about 20 to 30 seconds. You're gonna hear it make some noises and this is calibrating the sensor. So you just don't wanna have your hands or anything around the sensor while it's calibrating. So we'll just give this time to finish its, its setup. Okay, that multiple tone means that it's done. So now, sensor's back on. Setting two allows you to turn off the audible alarm for the trigger intrusion sensor, but leave the flashing light, the little LED that's right here in the front on. So to do that, push and hold the trigger for 10 seconds. And once we hear the sound, we're gonna pull the trigger twice because this is menu item two. Let go, one, two. Okay, and now if I put my finger in there, no alarm, but you might be able to see that the LED is flashing here still to indicate that the alarm has gone off. Setting three, this turns the shot sound on or off. As it's on right now, we're gonna turn it off. Push and hold for 10 seconds till I hear my setup menu tone. And then this is menu item three. Release, and then one, two, three. Okay, now I don't have any shot sounds. I do 
still get the clicking sound if I have the magazine round count set on. Okay, now I'm going back and I believe it's set to 17 rounds. So again, there you go. So you still get the round out sound, you just don't get the gunshot sound when you turn that off. And then if I want to turn that back on, it's the same process. Setting four, changing the different laser modes. The different modes are mode one, invisible laser. Now this is not to be confused with an infrared laser. This is if you have a red laser, this makes the pulse super short, but it'll still activate our targets. But also note that it will not activate the smokeless range in this mode. So if you have a red laser and you're going to use it with targets, then, and you don't want to be able to see the laser, you can put it in this mode one and it's such a brief pulse that you won't see the laser pulse with your eyes. But again, that only works with the targets. Mode two is dry fire and that's just a general mode that works with any of our targets as well as our smokeless range. Mode three is an extended duration. Again, something you'd only use with the red laser as you can see if you're flinching or pulling the shots because the laser is going to stay on so you'll see a little bit of a streak if you're jerking the trigger. And mode four is for bore sight mode. This really is best used for aligning the laser. Again, if you have an infrared laser, you're going to need to use the smokeless range when using this mode to align the laser. So now let's go through how to change the mode. It defaults to mode two, so we're going to change it to mode three, extended duration mode. So I'm going to push and hold the trigger for 10 seconds. And then I'm going to wait for the tone. Now I need to move it to menu item four. One, two, three, four. Wait for the sound. Now three, one, two, three, which is my extended duration mode. Okay, so now I've set it to uh, extended duration mode, number three. So once again, I went into setup mode. This is setting four out of the menu, so I hit the trigger four times and then waited. Then when I hear the tone again, now I set which of the laser modes that I want it to go into. Setting five, this is turning on or off the magazine round count. So right now it's at the default of 17 rounds. So if I pull the trigger 17 times, I'll start to get that sound, remove the magazine, put it back in, and now I can use it again. And remember I have the gunshot sound turned off. That's why you're not hearing it. So to turn this magazine round count off, I'm going to depress the trigger for 10 seconds to enter the setup mode. And this is setup menu number five. So once I get in here, there I'm in there, let go, and then one, two, three, four, five, let it go. Okay, now I've just turned off the magazine round count so I have unlimited shots. And again, to turn it back on, just repeat that same process. Setting six. Configure the magazine round count. So for this one, I've gone ahead and turned the shot sound back on and re-enabled the round count for the magazine. When we go through this procedure, the second part of it is setting how many rounds you want. You can set it from one up to 17 rounds. So it's defaulted to 17. So for this procedure, I'm gonna change it to five rounds. So again, go into the setup menu, push and hold the trigger for 10 seconds. All right, this is menu setup six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Now one, two, three, four, five to set five rounds. Okay, and now I should get five rounds. And now I'm out, you can hear the out sound. Now if I reset the magazine, I should get another five rounds. There we go. And again, you can go through that same procedure and set anything from one to 17 rounds. Setting eight, random malfunction mode. This turns on or off the random malfunction mode. Again, we're gonna push and hold for 10 seconds. And this is setting eight. So now pull the trigger eight times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
Okay, now random malfunction mode is enabled. So there was three shots. Right off the bat, I got one. So that, again, randomizes when it's going to require you to do a mag change. Setting 10, setting the intrusion alarm delay. As you can see here, the default is half a second, and I can set that up to be one second, one and a half seconds, or two seconds. And that's mode one, two, three, four, when I'm going into this setup menu. All right, so I'm going to get into my setup menu, hold it for 10 seconds, All right, this is setting number 10. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Now wait for the next tone. Now I'm gonna set it to one and a half seconds. So one, two, three. Okay, and for this demo, I've turned the alarm back on. So it should be about a one and a half second delay once I put my finger into the trigger well without pulling the trigger. There you go. Setting 11 is the post shot alert delay. And this is how long after you've taken a shot, if you leave your finger in the trigger before it sets off the trigger alarm again. Looking here at the user guide, you can see the default is set to two seconds, but we can change it to one, two, three, or four by the number of trigger pulls we do when we're in the secondary menu. So let's go ahead and go through how to do this. So we're gonna go ahead and set this to three seconds. So push and hold for 10 seconds until we get into the setup menu. Then we're gonna pull the trigger 11 times. Okay, release, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Now we're gonna wait for the next tone. And then one, two, three for three seconds and wait. Okay, so now that's adjusted that timing to three seconds after I pull the trigger before it's gonna set the alarm off. Currently settings 12, 13, and 14 are set aside for future expansions. So that brings us to setting 15, which is a factory reset. To do that, again, we go into the setup menu by holding the trigger for 10 seconds. Wait to hear the tone, and then we pull the trigger 15 times to factory reset. Okay, release, and then three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 12, 13, 14, and 15. There we go. Now we're back to factory settings. Shutdown procedure. If you're gonna store the gun for a long time, we suggest that you power it off with this shutdown procedure to help conserve battery life. To do that, all you do is drop the magazine, and then we're gonna pull the trigger once and release it to get rid of any remaining round that's in there. And then we're gonna pull and hold the trigger for 10 seconds until the red light turns on up front here. Okay. Red light came on, let go of the trigger, and now nothing happens. You can confirm by pulling it and you don't hear any sounds or see any lights. So now it's ready to store. Again, keep the magazine out. When you're ready to use it again, just put the magazine back in and you're ready to go. How to change the battery. Again, this uses one CR123 battery and it's located up top here under this black panel here. So we're gonna use a Phillips screwdriver And then we're gonna remove this plate. Now this screw has a little O-ring on there so it won't fall out, but I still like to keep my finger on there when I'm taking it off just to make sure that I don't drop it. Set that down on the table. Inside, you'll find the battery. You can just remove it, replace it with a new one, and all your settings will be retained. So whatever your custom settings are, they'll stay the same. And then just replace the black top here and tighten the screw. Again, you don't need to tighten this very tight, just snug it. That's it, you're ready for training again. That's all there is for this how-to video. Just remember that there is a good user guide that goes along with this that walks through all the things that we just went through. So I highly suggest downloading that for future reference. 
And if you have any troubles or run into any problems, please don't hesitate to reach out to us at customer service. Thank you.